what is up everyone jd here i hope you're all doing well today today i'm really excited because i'm going to be bringing you a mod for my demco ad20s what are we going to be doing today well i'm going to actually just give you a little bit of a backstory so for my ad20.5 i picked up a set of original goat shark bite titanium scales which you can see i did anodize myself i did pick up the backspacer as well and I really just love the way that it transformed this knife for me. So having said that, what I'm going to be doing is actually going ahead and installing a set of original goat scales done in titanium. And this one is more of like their diamond plate jigged pattern, which I think looks really, really good. They also included the spacers for the skiff because these are the linerless variants. So before I jump into that, I do have my Weeha bits out here. I do believe the pivot is T10. Yep. So we'll need the T10 for the pivot. And I believe everything else is T8, which is why I have the second driver out here made for CRKT by Scout Tool. These are both Scout Tool um, drivers. So they're really nice drivers. And this one here for CRKT is like 30 bucks and it is internal storage and it comes with Weeha bits inside as well, which is really, really great. I think these are T8, I'm just gonna double check real quick. Yeah, so T8 for the rest of the body. So this mat is also linked down below. I like this mat because it has little storage pockets and it has magnetic pockets for any of your steel bits. So we'll start by closing the knife and taking the pocket clip off. And I think I'm going to leave this raw. I could change my mind down the road later, but I think right now I'm just going to leave it raw and leave the pocket clip anodized for that little bit of pop of color. Yeah, so as you can see here, you're no longer going to need the liners. So when you disassemble this, I would disassemble it completely and take the liners off as well. Okay, I was able to get that out. Um, I think this is falling a little bit again on me, sorry. What I ended up doing was just using a 10 and setting that over top of the pin itself. And then what I did was I pushed out from the clamp side. So I had it over top like that. And then the little bit of pin that was sticking out here, I just pushed it in until it was flush. And um, two of them came out really easy. One of them I did need to get a set of pliers and just pull it lightly. I didn't have to like grip down on it or squeeze it too hard and it came out pretty good. So we have both of those apart. Let me set this aside. All right, after you fumbled around for about five minutes to get everything to sit flush, what you're gonna need next is you're gonna need these washers. And they do include um, a skiff spacer in there. So make sure you're using that. And then they have a set of hardened washers in here that you're gonna to wanna to install. So, all right, now 
that everything is lined back up correctly. Go ahead and drop your spacer in. Well, actually, we're going to put that in reverse. What you'll want to do next is just a little bit of oil, just a little bit of oil on your um, shark lock. And uh, mine feels smooth still. Yeah, mine feels smooth. I'm hoping it didn't do too much damage. Actually, you know what? I don't mind putting a little extra in the pivot here when it's a metal material because I feel like it's not going to impact it as much. And then I just do a little spin and try to put a little on the top as well. And then go ahead and install your washer and skiff spacer over top like so. And you should be good to go. Go ahead and reinstall the outer shell here should go together nicely because they gave you a little bit more uh, tolerance here. There we go. And then that's it. Now you just need to install your pivot. I'm at a really bad angle, guys. I'm so sorry I'm blocking the camera. There we go. There we go. That feels good. And then go ahead and reinstall this bolt separate from the pocket clip. Now, I'm going to say the one piece of feedback I would give to... Um, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Let me install this first. The one piece of feedback that I would give to original goat is uh, a landing pad. I think the landing pad that Demco installs on their knives um, is really nice. It, it helps it go in and out of the pocket a little bit nicer without having to worry about tearing up the pockets. Now these are not super sharp like the shark bite. These are definitely flatter. They're more recessed into the scale, which I appreciate. Um, so I do appreciate that. I'm just going to check my centering play, all that stuff. I do appreciate that very much. So, uh, centering looks good. Let's see. No play whatsoever. Let me just check the tightness. I'm going to play, you know, it takes a minute for me to get these tuned up, back it up just slightly and then back forward a little bit. All right. There is definitely no play. That feels good. Let's check all these bolts out. Um, but a landing pad, I think a landing pad would be good for the, an option, like make it an option so people can choose if they want to have the landing pad, um, on one side or the other. So on this one, again, I did do the lanyard hold delete. Um, I also did the weight reduction because I knew that the full titanium scales with the linerless were going to be heavier overall. Let me just wipe it down really quick and then I'll walk you around knife let me just make sure everything feels good with the lock too trying to decide if i want to yeah so i would say try to find something different to pry it apart i don't know if you're going to be able to tell on camera and i'm at an angle again this thing just keeps falling on me no matter how much I try to fix it, no matter how much I try to fix that thing, it moves around. Um, but it did just a little bit here and here on the shark lock itself, just kind of 
made like this littlest bit of a uh, mark, but I think overall this looks really good. This is what I was expecting it to look like. I have a little bit of pop of color with the pocket clip, so it's not monochromatic, but if you wanted to, you could wink this, and then I would recommend polishing it up if you wanted it to kind of match the look of the rest of the scale. I don't think I want to anodize it at this point. I'm just going to ride with it like this for a little while. I'll probably do a three month checkup, maybe even a two month checkup just to see how that grease is holding up. Cause I did put a very thin layer on there and the tolerances are so tight anyway, that it's going to be really tough to, um, tell how well it holds up. But this is very similar to what you see on the Chris Reef knives in the pivot which is why I wanted that. It's a very good grease and it's my, this will be my first knife testing it, but with it riding directly against the scales as opposed to the liners, that's another reason why I wanted to do that. But these feel really good. I love the texturing. I love the fact that it's not, it, it provides grip, but unlike the shark bite, which actually protrudes up off of the scale and you actually have a little bit more pokiness going on with these this gives you that grip without it being a saw so maybe um just with the shark bite i would probably recommend them offering like a landing pad because those do it does saw going in and out of the pocket let me know what you think did you like the way that this turned out again these are original goat they make aluminum and titanium. The aluminum is a little bit more affordable. Um, try to leave that there without shaking. <laughs> I'm like leaning over the table, but really good scales. These are the second set of scales I've had for them. I know that they make some for the DECA as well that are aluminum. I haven't seen any titanium for the DECA, but man, this is really nice. This came out great. Love the look at this. Um, these scales, in my opinion, just take the Demco's to a whole other level. Uh, the pivots are recessed a little bit. The screws are recessed. And of course, the pins are now completely hidden, really well chamfered around the edges. I'll probably do a full review of this after I've carried it for a few weeks. And then what I'll probably do is just check in to make sure uh, that everything is holding up nicely for the shark lock. And actually, I think I'm just going to put a dab of lube on here because the way the shark lock works is it's making direct contact. So I think it would be good just to have a little bit of lube touching that lock and, um, getting worked in. So I'll do that as well. And then I'll give you the update to see how everything is held up, how everything looks from the dirt and whatnot. Um, if I would give one piece of advice, it would just be to find something a little bit softer. This is clearly a very hardened steel. Maybe find something like a titanium pry bar or something to help you with the disassembly. I just don't have a very thin titanium pry bar to get in at that. Um, another thing you could do is just wrap a microfiber cloth, like your Civivi cloth around the tip of that. And just kind of, I was twisting side to side at the end, but initially I was trying to pull up and I think that's where I got those little marks. Uh, it's really hard to show it up on camera, but it's right there. And let's see, I'll try to hit the lighting there and zoom in. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, leave a like. If you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you follow along. And thanks to everyone out there that is already supporting the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. I love you guys. Until next time, peace.